behind those lyrics, right. and they're about jazz. <coughs> uh, but the, the real challenge was, you know, what did that mean for the relationship, and what did that mean for, you know, how he felt about how she was changing? Right. Yes. And I think that is a typical Hollywood story. There are a lot of people in this town uh, that have the same career: actors, actresses, whatever. And especially when the woman is more successful than. The, the man, if that is the case, it is a tricky situation to have a relationship, you know? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And, and the film addresses that, and it, it you know, addresses substance abuse and mental health and codependency. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's, it, it operates on many levels, and uh, having a voice and what to do with it and what, what you want to say in the world. And I, I just want to say to you, you know, at, at the end of your show, when you talk about being kind, you know, that is just the most important thing that anyone could say that has a, a voice in this world. And so thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. I love to have a platform to do that. You are. Yeah. You are. And you use that. And yeah. You use it. It's the most important thing. That's Lady Gaga. To do something where we know we're helping somebody else. That's I've never yeah, seen it before. You, when you finish the character uh, shooting the movie, is that when she was singing? I didn't know the, that's what she looked yeah. like. because there is, uh, I, without giving away the end of the film, there is some tremendous uh, emotion and tragedy. Uh, so I wanted to get her out. But I like Ellen DeGeneres. She's, she's Ellen still DeGeneres. There. She's still there? Yeah. Is that, sure. Yeah, but some of it is a good thing that she's there, right? You know, I think I think passion and, yeah. and, and fighting to be who you are. I liked I it when Ellen DeGeneres uh, did a show with Michael J. Fox. Michael um, J. Fox. It was a wonderful uh, show. Uh, show. After this, but uh, first, the name of the CD and the music is great. It's called The Stars Born. Everybody in the audience is going home with a copy. Of the <laughs> we are back with Lady Gaga from A Star Is Born. And I, I gotta say, I'm just, I'm so grateful to be here. Being in this film has been one of the most fulfilling artistic experiences of my life, and I'm so very grateful. <laughs> And thanks for having me again. To say she's talented is an understatement. I'm happy to have Lady you Gaga. Yeah, this is a lot, but this is, I would say, it's, it's the biggest thing you've ever done, and you deserve everything that you're going to, that's going to come from this. Uh, I'm glad people too. I, I went out on a limb on, on I, and I don't know what's happening yet with the Oscars, but I just told her during the commercial, she's going to win an Oscar for this film. That's good. <laughs> as long as... It's a Van Gogh film, does as well. It's yeah, Tinted yeah. Gate. The reward for me is all in the work, and the reward for me is she all in the work. She deserves an Oscar. But I like a tint at Tinted Gate, the movie about right, Bits of Van Gogh. Um, I'd like to get an Oscar. I'd like them to get an Oscar. Uh, yeah. Life is a game. You know that. Well, this is where I live. Obviously, I'm not breaking in. I'm not burgling the place. Burgling? Burgle, burgling or something. I'm not robbing the place easier. So, yeah, she's extremely talented. Um, Lady Gaga. Uh, really wonderful. Uh, and uh, 
Beethoven. I think he understood a bit about music, Ludwig van Beethoven. Yeah, he did. Beethoven's uh, Ludwig van Beethoven background when he was growing up. He knows a, a child prodigy, uh, musical prodigy, prod, prodigy, prod, can't, get, can't say the right words, prodigy. His father wasn't very nice to him, uh, to young Ludwig, but he still embraced music. He didn't turn, turn away from it. And that's good. So yes, Lady Gaga, in my opinion, um, for what it's worth, she's a very talented lady, like Mariah Carey. She's obviously very talented and very beautiful looking. Mariah Carey, um, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, and so on and so forth. Taylor Swift. So... <coughs> Maria Callas, she, unfortunately the opera singer Maria Callas has passed away. So I've had a piano lesson today, oh my name's Tony Amore, my name's Tony Amore, artist from Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire, England. Uh, so, so, this is me as you can see overworked overworked hmm. and underpaid Gosh, you might coffee I drink. <laughs> I blame the Americans for that. The Americans and the Colombians. Or the Brazilians, whoever it is who makes the coffee, basically. United States of America, Colombia, Brazil. <coughs> so I've been to my piano lesson today. Um, I've had four hours this week so far. Be having 10 hours piano lessons. And I've talked to a piano teacher today, Stephen Harper, and, um, um, about these private piano lessons I've been having for the past year, playing these concert pianist piano pieces. I've talked to him about the possibility of me going to university, um, a local university like Keele University. <clears throat> and studying music. Now I do go up to Keele University anyway and I'll be going next week to see uh, my uh, the Russian piano teacher, my Russian piano teacher uh, Tatiana and she'll be teaching me piano <coughs> in the clock house, uh, the music department at Keele University. But that's only for a private lesson with Tatiana and she's teaching me these Franz Liszt uh, piano pieces and Frederick Chopin and different ones, different piano pieces. <coughs> and uh, But I'm not doing a degree at Keele University. So I talked to my piano teacher today, Steve Harper, because uh, I've got two, obviously I've got two piano teachers. I've got two piano teachers <coughs> and uh, we talked about me going to university with, with the final goal of me either living in Paris, France, and going to one of the universities there in, in France or in Paris and renting a room, saving up loads and loads of money, or the possible <coughs> or having piano lessons in Paris, France. I've checked up. There's lots of um, uh, people who train you uh, in piano uh, <coughs> in Paris, France. There's lots of piano teachers. And so on. Yes, yeah, a few of them that speak English, quite a few. There's a, there's a few American uh, piano teachers, and I think there's one English uh, piano teacher in Paris, France. So I checked on the 
on the uh, internet on the internet so or go to Spain and study music there so we talked about that maybe not this September but maybe this September 2019 but maybe um, maybe uh, next September 2020 2020 and uh, so we talked about that and Stephen Arpin, my teacher, says that uh, <coughs> it's a possibility I could go to Spain, possibility if I had enough money and stuff, and I could ask um, a bar owner, Spanish bar owner, uh, male or female, depending who owns the bar, and, um, <coughs> and ask for accommodation and um, I'll play the hour, I'll play the piano for you and I'll brush up for you. I'll brush <laughs> the floors and stuff and <coughs> play the piano, uh, play the piano for you and, um, you know, money in the evenings or whatever. And then I'd have a life out there. This is what Steve said I could probably do. This is what Steve offered my piano teacher who's giving me these private lessons, piano lessons. Because I think we, sh we should have a goal anyway in life. And even if I don't realise my goal, at least, at least... I, at least I'd, I've tried to work towards it, even if, even if it doesn't really happen. But I'd like to think it would. Now, for me, music isn't just about, or art, because I obviously do art as well, it isn't about just being in the fame game and being, being in the fame game and being famous. Or <coughs> like... Um, like these people you see on X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and America's Got Talent and Italy's Got Talent and Spain's Got Talent or France has Got Talent. It's not just about, or Germany's Got Talent or whatever it is. It's not just about uh, that, about being, becoming famous. It doesn't have to be about that. It can be just to learn for your own pleasure and uh, for your own comfort. So you can play for your friends and that's it. So uh, you don't have to go uh, looking after, looking for fame, you know. Um, I always believed that if fame was going to come. It uh, it comes if if fame is going to if if fame does happen, it w it will happen. Um, you know um, when perhaps when you least expect it or whatever, but you know fame can happen. It will happen if it, if it's meant to be. So I'm working on this Mephisto Waltz by Franz Liszt. Mephisto Waltz by Franz Liszt. So that's uh, Franz Liszt Mephisto Waltz. <coughs> uh, I've got some notes in Vivarchi, meaning lively. Uh, three eight quavers. Uh, <coughs> and different things anyway. This is what I've, I've we circled this, or well, I've circled it. Uh, so I can work on this um, area there where it's been circled. On the one, two, three, fourth line down. And that area there. It's been circled where it says triplets. Uh, triplets are and that's an area to work on and then a little further up here uh, to work on that broken chord with the left down chord and we talked about using the wrist uh, rather than rigid plane but um, rather than just using the elbow rather than just using the elbow but to use the uh, to use the wrist so instead of using the old arm, using the wrist on the um, the attack of the piano on the attack when you when you <coughs> the boldness of attack when you strike the piano with your fingers <coughs> and thumb. So we talked about um, watching Dmitry Shishkin play this, the Russian concert pianist Dmitry Shishkin playing the Mephisto Waltz by Franz Liszt. Um, 
it's been arranged by Froccio Bussoni, but Franz Liszt composed it, Mephisto was. And um, so, <coughs> so yeah, that's uh, Mephisto was anyway. And uh, <coughs> Dmitry Shishkin, if you watch it, when if I, if you watch his attack uh, on the strike, uh, the movements of him um, making contact with the piano in a very a profound and strong way <coughs> um, you can see you can see that he uses his wrists you can see that he uses his wrists um, so I'm trying to find that bit now so on this bit <coughs> on this bit of the uh, on this bit I'll just use the right hand <coughs> instead of going that he uses his wrist so but not up here not playing his hand up here keeping as close to the, the keyboard as he can so not using his wrist to go fast to go faster oh, sorry that's the wrong chord sorry so. So. so it's like that basically but <laughs> should be doing that so that's that so he's using his wrist to make for that attack so so and same with the left hand <coughs> same with the left hand yeah and you see again keeping your fingers not up here or up here or hovering over close to like when you obviously when you're playing classical guitar Spanish guitar and your fingers are ready to um, to sustain the the string to to go on to the urge uh, to touch the string press the string down and uh, your fingers are ready they're not out here they're almost they are ready to play the next the next chord or whatever it is they're playing Next arpeggio or whatever. Um, so I mean, uh, or to the uh, next, um, the next um, position. Sorry, in the next position. So first position, and the classical guitar, acoustic guitar, Spanish guitar, and then second position, third position. So they can go from first position. They're 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 up. They're they're almost ready to go to put the fingers on for the next chord in the seventh position and back to the second and then back to the first <coughs> so economy of movement so again you're using the wrist but not from up here um but close but closer to so your hand fingers are closer to and um keeping that shape with your hand like you do with a spanish guitar you're keeping the shape of your chords uh, keeping the shape of your fingers for the and thumb, um, thumbs for the uh, the chords. So, so we're using. rigid because that seems very rigid there but if I play it's got to be <laughs> every, every chord has got to be the same um, got to be the same sound and you can sound because I can't have can't have the E louder than the F better uh, than the B and the G you can hardly hear and I can't have me think me when I should be playing the the B. I can't be hitting the C uh, the C because the C is uh, that is uh, written into this this chord. 
uh, so it isn't part of this chord. So I've got to make sure it's all even. So using the wrist um, I talked I talked to the piano teacher about this today Steve Harper so, so you see so so that's um, Just be six there, yes, yeah, sorry, so so sing it. And the next one. And then holding this next note down when I play the chord. And then using your wrist, using that. And holding this chord. So but the first one of them, huge chord. So D D A and E. D A and D. Uh, so natural D natural A and natural E. So it's a massive stretch. Um, so it's gotta it's gotta be a broken chord. It's a broken chord. So instead of playing just playing a chord like this, you're going kind of sound, but it's gotta be Faster than that. And you gotta hold I gotta hold it. Oh, and so keep that speed going. So and then oh <laughs> and then um the chord on the left hand is just as big as the right hand. So, and then that bit that I circled for the uh, strike, um, for the um, the um, profound strike um, on the um, on these triplets. <coughs> So, well, that's got to be one, so it's like that. Building up the speed. And build up the speed. I think it's the same as what I've just done. There, there, keeping your fingers as close to the keys as you possibly can when you play the next chord up. Um, so, when you play your next chord, uh, next uh, triplet, sorry. So, 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 so okay. and you're keeping your fingers there. For the it's just the same thing twice.
guess we're working on separate bits and doing them 10 or 20 times or 50 times. Obviously the obvious goal is to get it so you can play right. Sometimes that means sacrificing not playing other pieces but you have to decide what it is you want to learn how to play. And what's important to you. That and going as fast as you, you possibly can uh, with, with that as, well, as fast as you need to. As it says, I like growth of Archie, <coughs> so it's fast, it's fast with um, it's, it's fast with the uh, aliveliness, and it's quasi presto. So quasi presto is really very very fast. It's quite very fast, and it's quasi professed. Uh, so as fast as you. Uh, you can make it uh, quasi uh, presto. So, so that's what that is. Um, I'm working on that. Uh, working on that. Mm. So then you've got <coughs> this first bit here. <coughs>
abstract that again. Discipline myself. I'm, I'm trying to discipline myself to not be lazy when I'm doing it <laughs> and just do the damn thing right. So, <laughs> rather not half heartedly. So, so. And again. That's when you think a bit strong, that's a bit stronger there. Is good. See, unfortunately again, someone who doesn't want to do his lessons, piano lessons. That's it. Someone who doesn't want to practice properly, <laughs> take it seriously. Good. It's a technical term, pants. So um, that wasn't very really good. Just even on the left hand. So, <laughs> that wasn't very really good. So I'm not be even on the left hand. So. so that little finger in my left hand does not. In the key strongly enough. Still not hitting strong enough. Still not even enough. Still not very good. Still not good. I can still hear the left hand not playing right. So I'm working on the left hand on its own, working slow on the left hand, so left hand slow. Well. I'm 
again, back to those triplets again, <coughs> so back to those triplets again, making them even and a uh, profound attack on that. on both hands. Page three in the Fisto Wars by Franz Liszt, a middle C and D. Yeah. <laughs> 
so oops, I, want to, I mean <coughs> left hand over uh, right hand right hand on its own um, E sharp so C sharp here, sorry. So then it goes <coughs> then So anyway that's uh, the Mephisto Waltz by Franz Liszt. By Franz Liszt and um This is Franz Liszt. Franz Liszt himself, the virtuoso genius, virtuoso piano genius. Franz Liszt, 1811 to 1886. So that's Franz. That was Franz Liszt. My room. That's my room. Poster of me. <coughs> Yael Norman has done this. These photographs, Yael Norman of Newcastle under Lyme, when I went for a photo shoot. So that was me 11 years ago, uh, 10 years ago. That's me, Tony Amore, artist, musician, classical pianist. See me on YouTube, Comic Relief 2007 Part 3. So if you wanted to go on YouTube, you can see me on com just type in Comic Relief 2007 uh, Part 3, or Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. So just see me on YouTube if you wanted to, Comic Relief 2007 Part 3. It's a documentary I did, it's a mad world for mental health. So, I was on BBC One. It's <sighs> not pushed off me. Oops. This is my artwork I've done. Like I said, I like playing piano. I also like doing my artwork as well. So this is my artwork, as you can see. So that's not some of my artwork anyway. Um, so Giant, the movie Giant. Um, we named Tony Amore on. That's my name, Tony Amore. Giant, and it's got, it starred James Dean. Amazing actor, James Dean.
and the movie Giant was filmed in uh, Aberystwyth, Aberystwyth, Spain. Eh, Aberystwyth, Aberystwyth, uh, Aberystwyth, um, Wales. No, it wasn't. No, it was filmed in Texas, United States of America. I don't know. But there you go. Could have been filmed in Aberystwyth in Wales. Quite a good university there, I think. I think it's Bangor University. Bangor University in Wales. I was going to apply to that a long time ago. But, yes. For art. Because they've got a really good uh, music department and uh, art uh, department at Bangor. Bangor University in Wales. Beautiful place, Wales. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful place. And the, the countryside, obviously. Wales. So. So this is my artwork. And that's it from Tony Amore. Thank you very much. Oh, um, is there anything else? Oh, just some uh, more music books that I bought. I don't know who that guy is, he looks kind of familiar. Looks like I've seen him on TV a few times, or I've heard him on the radio, I know. He looks familiar anyway. I think I heard him on the radio, so that's probably why he looks so familiar. Positive, I've heard him on the radio. This guy here, this, this gent here, I've heard him on the radio. I thought I'd seen him somewhere before. Um... Ah yes, Ricky Martin, Living La Vida Loca, Living La Vida Loca. So this is some music that I have bought. Christina Aguilera, I think, I think it's on here. No, it's on a song. This one. So this one. Um, back with me. Oops. Um, so this one. Yes. Anyway, this is the guy that I saw on the uh, that I've um, <coughs> that I think I've seen before on the radio. Ah, uh, when the radio was on. Um. We don't have radio one a lot to you, as you probably have gathered. So, um. ah, I don't know if I can say this actually. Here we go. So this is um, called feel, feel, okay, feel, 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 and uh, <coughs> that's it, just feel. Mm. And this is written by Andy Williams, Andy Williams, the guy <coughs> I was telling you about on the radio. So this is Andy Williams, <coughs> and it goes like this it's got my sharp so it's huh. <coughs> now this is interesting now because 
I think that is, that is something that I would like to say um, about uh, if I can remember anyway. But if, if you're playing this and then going. So on and so forth. Uh, the chords is written for you, and uh, you're playing that. You're playing what's written. This is written for you as well, but this is a song. <coughs> this is a song. So if that's written like that, that's how you play it. But this is how you play it, and this is how you sing it, which is completely a huge difference. It's a big, big difference. So, <coughs> and the difference is that. Where you are, which is taken from the Chopin movie, a uh, song to remember, this line, is where you are, <coughs> if you play, say, say you were playing Chopin, Frederick Chopin, and you were playing, <coughs> um, so, I don't know, I don't think, I um, don't know really, I don't, so, so this is the ballad. to make every note sing and dance well <coughs> well this is what you've got got to do with uh, when you're playing the piano when you're singing I'm not really a singer so <coughs> so, uh, so you're trying to make that make it sing and dance if you like so it's you're making the notes sing and dance the music sing and dance so it's um, Uh, so, so come and hold my hand. So you got that. So it's <laughs> yeah, it sounds it's simplistic to play uh, that, but to to play it with this like with this song. Come and hold. See, this is it. One, no, and then the con, ta, ta. It's almost broken, like broken speech. The, the, the. So, obviously, I, you know how it goes and how it's, how it's song, how this Robbie Williams song is, is, is written. Uh, I want to contact the living. I so I want to contact the living or something like that, don't you? And then it goes, Not sure I understand that I sit and talk to God and he has just and he just laughs at my at my plans. My plans. Oh, uh, is there another page, right? No, <laughs> it isn't another page because it's written underneath. And then it goes, uh, But um, love and earthly passion and death. Notice, <laughs> so there you go. Yes, I just wanna feel real loving. I just wanna feel real love. Feel the own that I live. So, <laughs> so there you go. So, obviously, Robbie does it a million times better than I do. So, so it's I just want that. So you got that. So the sentence goes like this: a broken sentence or broken um, speaking. I just want now an F. And then um, 
Sí. So, so, come on. Yeah, so that's it anyway. So, I just wanna feel real love, feel the oh my living. Cause I got so too much life running through my veins, going to waste, <coughs> waste, waste, all right. <laughs> so, anyway, perhaps I should be having singing lessons and not piano lessons. <laughs> but there you go. So, there's a huge difference to playing for when you're playing a song and thingy. The same as I never could get the hang of uh, playing a guitar. And singing along, I think I've said this before, playing a guitar, strumming a guitar, and then, um, and then, what's this Tony I'm already going on about? I could never get the angle of playing a guitar, the chords and stuff, and the fingering, finger picking or whatever, and playing the chords and singing at the same time, and getting that rhythm of the guitar going, uh, and then singing. I couldn't get them, all three, I couldn't, um, or two, uh, to uh, combine, I couldn't get that the beat in the guitar when you're singing as well. I just couldn't get the hang of it. Just um, I tried, but it just never worked with me. <coughs> so, but everybody's different. People can do that and pick it up in five seconds. Robbie Williams obviously can, but uh, but I can't. And that's it from Tony Mori. So and remember. You need to switch your piano one if you've got a switch on piano. Angels. And remember, angels if you want to, but remember, keep practicing. Thank you. Piano.